it is written in it. It said, Then shall that make your way prosperous, and you shall have what? Good success. I'd like us to know that what God intends for every child of God is to have good success. Not just to be successful, but to have success that the world cannot demystify. The kind of success that will make the entire world to behold that this can only be God. Remember the testimony of our, of our dear sister on Sunday, he said, I've never let my life been jobless for more than three days. From one to one, and how the job came, you can say you cannot take away God factor from what God is doing. Now, that is to say, everybody around could know and testify that this could only be the hand of God behind this happening. Now, this is the kind of success we are talking about exceptional success that will make even sinners to gather around and say, We will follow you. The God you serve will become our God. Now, this is good success. But I'd like you to know that good success actually follow principles. Nobody succeeds by accident. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. You shall meditate day in, day and night. You shall observe to do all that is written therein. Then your way will become prosperous and you shall have good success. Before good success is making your way prosperous. Before your way become prosperous is actually obedience. And until you meditate in the word of the Lord to be able to point out principles that you are going to obey, your way won't be prosperous and you will never have good success. It is not accidental to be successful. No. No. Even to fail is not an accident. You have to do something to fail. If they give you an exam and you have zero over 100, you have, to, you have to tell yourself, I don't know anything and I'm not going to write anything and you have to fail. You have to do something before you fail. At least you register for the exam before they give you paper. Failure also takes movement. How much more success? People who have bad marriages also get married. They only fail in the marriage and that's why we call them failed marriage. They attempted it, but they failed. Even to fail, it requires work. Yeah. People don't fail accidentally. They fail because they engage or they try to attempt. So to now be successful and ever have good success in every department of your life, God principles must be coined out from scriptures, heart of meditating day and night in his word, then your way will become prosperous after you obey, and yeah, you begin to have good success. Nobody is proud of a failure. I said it. Nobody is proud of a failure. Somebody wrote to the exam that takes people to college in Nigeria, and then the person have F9 parallel. If it is your brother or your sister, you will not even tell your friend. They say, what did your brother get? He said, don't worry. Why is not serious. But when your brother has A1 parallel, it's already everywhere on Facebook. They are proud of people that are successful. They don't need your permission to publicize you. People who have A1 parallel, they are already on newspaper. It's newspaper that announces the person. Not even him or her. So you, Kabaria Toki Bosiata, nobody is proud of a failure. So if you are actually, if your mentality is complacent and yeah, you have actually yielded to mediocrity, thinking that living an average is what we are talking about, no, sir, you are not on the right lane. You need to break away from the mentality of average and the mentality of mediocrity. You need to come in principles in line with God so that you can move forward. Now, let me say this. If you are not thinking to be successful, success because try to be successful because of your children. The level of your failure is where your children will continue. If you pay house rent till you die, that's where your that's how your children will continue. They'll keep paying house rent also, except God intervening in their issue. But if you are successful to build a house before they come, they might not stay in that house, but they will have mentality that at least we have a land that is reserved in the name of our parents. It is called an inheritance. The Bible even said, a good man lives in inheritance for his children. So nothing to live is no good. Why? It means... Sorry, hope I'm not offending anybody. I will see it again. This is not in my note. Oh, the presence of God is mighty here. Now I believe this. 
This is the house of the Lord. The presence of God is mighty. Succeed. Even for the sake of the children, you will hand, don't hand over the baton of failure to your children. Don't do that. And for a parent who has given back to us, you think they did not hand over many things to you. No, forgive. Your background should not put your back on the ground. Climb up and climb higher than them. Be determined. Since the Bible says you have good success, believe it. But let me pray for someone here tonight. You, the last failure you know will be the last. Amen. Your amen does not sound like someone that is serious. Amen. The last success, the last failure you know will be the last in your life. Amen. If you are saying so amen, let your amen be louder than this. Amen. Tonight I'll speak to you what I caption the warfare dimension to success. The book of Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12, the Bible recorded it says, right from the day of John the Baptist the kingdom of God suffered a violence and the violence is taken by what? Let me say this, nobody will be successful in the energy of the flesh. There are many people who know principles who have read many success books yet they fail because they neglect the warfare dimension. Knowing principle is good because God will not prosper empty head. My people are distressed for lack of knowledge. You really need to be knowledgeable. Before you even build capacity in the school of success, you really need to be knowledgeable. The Bible recorded, it said, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 and verse 32, it said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You cannot actually enjoy lifting and building except you go through the technicality of the world. And when the world has transformed you, your mentality becomes in alignment with the frequency of God and yet you begin to communicate success. Yes, it's true. A lot of persons are aware. A lot of persons have the information. A lot of persons has read from cover to cover and they have actually learned success principles but in, in, in actually trying to implement it, they fail. The question is this. At the principle where they have learned, is it, dif is, is it difficult? Now, I remember I told you about the four D's to success where, where you have to be determination, dedication, discipline and then you have to be diligent. There are many people who understand that who have actually been engaging it yet they are not successful. The question is this. Is the word of God a lie? Is God fake? But not everybody pay attention to the welfare dimension of success. Right from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered a violence and the violence gets successful. You can't, you see, if you will not engage the welfare dimension, have not understand the principles, you will still not succeed. There are many things I know that I want you to see the light of the day, but they will never come to pass until I press in prayers. I've seen that happen many times. There are things I've read about. There are things I've built capacity over. There are things I've studied about. But I've never seen them materialize. Why? Simply because I've not been able to generate some spiritual energy have not been able to generate energy in the spirit to bat it in the in, in physical. The Bible recorded it said, as soon as Zion travail, she what? She brought forth. As soon as Zion travail, she brought forth. Until there is a traveling in the spirit. That means warfare, silencing every opposition. There are dimensions of success you will never see. Never forget that the plan of the enemy is to keep everybody a slave to him. One of the mission of the devil is that the devil come to kill, to steal, and to what? And to destroy. What's the meaning of that? The success you are yearning for, there is a contention. There is a devil somewhere that is trying to steal that success from you. There are people who become successful and they become scam. I've seen that before. One young man wrote me yesterday, close to about fifty thousand dollars, kept in his watch. And the money belongs to the mother. And that's where he picks money from to actually pay school fees 
also. The young man wrote me. He said he didn't know one thing led to one thing. He met some people and the rest of that. And then the whole $50,000, he became scammed. $50,000 is more than 25 million naira. Right? About 25 million naira. He said, Pastor, pray for me. The pastor that I really want to pray, I began to think, where do I start from? And he said, I only have two weeks to my exams. I need to pay. And my mother does not know. If my mom knows about this, she might die. I've not replied that young man to now. Not because those parents were not successful. They must have engaged some principles to be successful. To see that kind of a reality of results. But look at this. Something led to one thing. What they call success. They became scammed of it. And this is why the warfare dimension to success is important. If you understand the principle, don't rely on it. Press in the realm of the spirit to break, to make, look at this. If God is the reason behind your result, you will never go down. Yeah, believe this. If God is the reason behind your result, you won't go down. It doesn't matter what is fighting you. It doesn't matter the gang up of the enemy against you. You will never go down. You understand principles that is actually gotten from scriptures and then you press in the spirit to see it manifest. You won't go down. The part of the just is like a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. If God begins to fuel your results, you keep getting better. Principles are good, but press in the realm of the spirit. You want to be successful in marriage, it's not that free. You want to be successful in business, it's not that free. There is no vacant room up there. Believe me. They said the sky is wide. It's true. But in position, it's not vacant. There is no realm you want to press into today that you will not meet someone there. You can become colleague in billions. But the place is not vacant. And the people who already got there engage some mysteries. Nobody rise by chingam. No, people don't rise like that. Believe me. Believe me. You want to be successful? Have a major breakthrough around your life that will make the entire world to celebrate the God you serve. Understand the welfare dimension that actually keep people to be successful in every area of their life. I'll tell you two stories of a young man, of two young men in scriptures. And then I will tell you three things the Lord told me. And then we're going to be praying some three prayers and then we'll close. There is a young man called Jacob in Genesis chapter 32. Genesis 32 from verse 24 to 28. Now if you study the account of Jacob where Jacob, the name, the meaning of Jacob simply means a some planter. Somebody that is dubious. What we call in Nigeria 419. A Yahoo boy. That's the meaning of Jacob. A some planter. But the name you bear actually is your spirit. Is sorry, the name you bear is actually your address in the spirit. When God wants to communicate anything to you, it is your name you bear. Now study scripture well. When God wants to interplay or interact with men, he address you by your name. So the name you bear is an address in the spirit. And the name you bear has a lot to tell over your destiny. Believe this. I've seen people who, who, be, who actually answer a name that the oracle has done it. There are some reality they could not break from. Why? Because there is a covenant behind that name. There was a time the name David was speaking from few things against me. I had to pray against. Every lady starts seeing me as somebody important. I have love for you. I, just, some people come to my house and move all clothes. Daddy, do you not like what you see? Ah, I had to pray. At the point we need to bring some hand bills to change my name to my local name. People say, why are you doing this? I say, let me change first. Because one of the dealings of David that he has issues around women. Some of you know that story. The reality and the covenant of the name you bear that comes to interplay in your life. And that's why when you want to name your children, be careful. Don't name them because your enemy are hungry at you. Say, what's your name? I win my enemy.
the enemy did not love me. My neighbor that said, I will not prosper, I don't show them. You see, there are some silly, silly name people give and then it affects the destiny of children. The name of Jacob was actually unto him. And Jacob understood what is happening around his life. He said, Lord, I need to break free from this kind of reality that I might come into a land of good success. Don't forget that whether you believe it or not, that name answered that he even collected the bad right of the elder brother. I mean, of you remember? Now, Esau would actually have been careless, but nevertheless, there was a covenant that was actually hanging on Jacob. To the point that the mother, the mother was part of the person who collided. He said, let the sin be upon me. When Jacob toyed around and he saw that there is a need to break free from this kind of experience, the Bible said, and Jacob was left alone. Genesis 32 verse 24. And there wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. He said, you touch your old Lord, I'm paraphrasing right now. He said, I will not let you go unless you what? You bless me. And the Bible recorded, if you read verse 27, the angel of the Lord told him, he said, your name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince that has, has power with God and with men, and that has what? Prevail. Prevail there simply means good success. The name became changed from Jacob to Israel. Then another covenant began to interplay in his life. But Jacob did not change that name just by ordinary, oh yeah, your name is no more David. Now be bearing Paul. No. There is a welfare dimension that needs to be engaged in the spirit to have that change of reality. Nothing changed ordinarily. There is a warfare dimension to success. If you truly want to have good success, there is a warfare dimension. There is. And after his name changed, everything began to change around Jacob. Starting from Genesis, starting from Genesis 33, all that Jacob has, things began to change. Now let me move further. There is a young man because of time. There's a young man called Jabez. Jabez, according to some theologian, Jabez was already 40 years. And the Bible recorded in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, if you read from verse 9, the Bible recorded, he said, he said, the mother named him Jabez because I bore him in what? I bore him in, in what? In pain. So I named him sorrow. And that actually become the reality around the guy's life. Everywhere the boy appears is sorrow. His business sorrow. His family sorrow. Everything around him became sorrowful. And the young, young man realized himself one day in verse 10. And he went to the Lord and he said, That thou wouldest bless me indeed. Verse 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 10. That will enlarge my territory. That your hand will rest upon me. That will not cause pain. The Bible said, And the Lord granted him what? That which he asked. When the Lord answered him, it means the devil over him gave way. The reality, Kaboski Mahanta. Ehozi. Shabari Tehata. There's someone here tonight. Ekonria Tehita. I stand by the rod of the higher priesthood. Keboriasi. Ekuskita. Every gang up of wickedness in the night. That has gang up to speak against your breakthrough. I see in the realm of the spirit. I see I saw three women in the realm of the spirit. There's someone here I don't want to scare you, and that's how I won't mention your name. They gang up and they say you will not rise above this level. They make some spell in the middle of the night, and they look as if you are trying to go up, and yet you look as if there is a force pulling you down. I stand by the rod of the higher priesthood today. In the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord. The Bible says, Surely they shall gather not by me, but he that gather for your sake shall fall. For your sake, every gang up of the enemy against your rising, I scatter them by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Okupo sika atoya, erita hita handoko, iketusa hata, eriko suke porita, erita. The Bible says he's the lifter up of the head of man. He's God that lifts up the head of people. I stand by the rod of the higher priesthood tonight. In the name of Jesus, the resurrected Lord, every gang up of evil, every arrangement of wickedness, I dissolve this mystery against you tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you will not be granted. You will not remain at one spot for the rest of your life. I command the cloud of darkness against you to tear down now in the name of Jesus. Ah. 
There is a warfare dimension to success. There is. Nothing will move until you move it in the spirit. Understand the principle. Nobody will deny you. Yes, it's true. But there are people that have first class that do not have first class life. There are people who have first class that are riding Okada today. Yeah. There are people who are first class who are washing toilet even abroad. When they look at them, there is a symbol on them that will never qualify them for anything good. I've seen people who are in abroad and yet they are indebted. Seriously indebted. I can begin to mention them if they will permit me to say so. Yet, they are no more on the shore. They hands in our currency and yet they are still indebted. Badly indebted. Badly indebted. There is a warfare dimension to rising. That you escape to Ghana won't excuse you. When that thing is not shifted, things will remain the same. Your experience will never change. Oh, I'm tired of Nigeria it's because Nigeria is okay, it's a lie. Okay, travel to anywhere. When that thing is not shifted, I read the story of a young man when I was young. Of how the mother said, uh, You will not travel abroad because of some few things. You have to stay with me and the rest of that. And then, and the woman called the young man in the middle of the night. And the young man had in abroad where the young man is. Until the young man got to Nigeria. That's when the young man remembered that she was called. He has not done anything with his life till now. I remember somebody was traveling abroad. And then when he entered plane, he looked as if he forgot his shoe. So he didn't want to stop because they were about to take off. So he left the shoe. He tried to look for the shoe. He didn't see it. He got to where he was. And then he had one encounter in the night that come and pick your shoe. When he got to the when he got back home, the shoe was with the mother. The mother said, I kept your shoe for him. That became the connecting force to which to bring him. I don't want to tell you some few things so that I won't scare you. But there is a warfare dimension to good success. The story of Jabez did not change ordinarily. That guy has to engage in prayers. The story of Jacob did not change ordinarily. That guy has to engage. That, that's not a gentleman prayer. That's a warfare dimension of prayer. If you watch your enemy destroy you, you will be destroyed. Your enemy will repent tomorrow and they will still go to heaven. I told you of a story of a young man called Lai Wowe. Many of you who have been the whole member of this church will know the story of that young man. This young man was very brilliant and then he could travel anywhere and then he got, he got a British uh, scholarship to study abroad. And the elder sister said, you will not return. Ah. And the young man just laughed over it and then, so he went there, he had first class, became the top of, he broke news, he became successful. Now, today is Wednesday. Let's say Tuesday. Yesterday was Tuesday. So the young man was supposed to return to Nigeria by Wednesday. So on Tuesday, he went to swim. He just dived inside the water and that was the last thing they saw. The, the guy broke his head right there. And they brought up his cup. It was his cup that they returned. He studied there for more than four years. But while he was going, the other sister said, you will not return. So he, he laughed over it. He never thought it was something very important. But they didn't return alive. He never returned. That woman has been born again now and is a dickiness in the church. I don't want to mention the name. Like where we has gone to hell for not knowing, for not knowing God. Like where we has lost his glory for not actually fighting warfare. The sister who was a witch before is now a born again and a dickiness in the church. If you will not destroy your enemy, they will destroy you, they will repent and will still go to heaven. Believe me. Believe me. So there are three things we need to deal with in the school of welfare if you want to have good success. Number one is actually foundational powers. One thing that I hate that people become successful is what? Now the case, the case of the case of Jabez was foundational power. Who actually, that is household wickedness? Who told who told Jabez that you would not be successful? The mother that gave birth, the mother said, "I name you sorrow because the pain to give birth to you was too much." That is household wickedness. If Jabez will not rise to put an end to that activities and that reality in the spirit, that young man will remain at the mercy of that reality for life. 
that thou wouldest bless me indeed. You see, stop taking life as if it's casual. Some of you, you say it's because I have a free mind. I'm a free man. Don't worry, continue to be free. You understand what I'm talking about. Thank God I don't pick calls in the night again. You understand what I'm talking about. The things you are supposed to take care of, stand your ground and be responsible. Stop pushing your responsibility to people. When you are successful, you are for yourself. Yes, you might be a blessing to others, but you, you will become successful first before you become, because, before you become a conduit of blessing to others. And that's why you need to take care of yourself, people. Believe me. Believe me. Foundational power that has vowed that you will not succeed has to give way. Bible said, in Psalm 11 and verse 3, he said, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? There are foundations that people don't rise. There are foundations that people don't go successful. The other brother, there is a particular, okay, but I, the Lord began to speak to me right now. I, I've been made bold to say this, and I'm not sorry to say it. I'm the first person among seven children that ever attended university and graduated in my own family. In my own family. I saw hell. I saw hell. I'm privileged to know little book. Might not be much. But I love reading, so I should be a little bit intelligent. But there's a particular time when I was in 200 level in the university. If I read now, I read now, I'll forget. I'll read, this is a boy. Once I turn my back, I'll forget what I read. Ah, it became a much concern. Those days I was a Muslim. So I called the people around me. They did all manner of things for me. You leak one in the morning, leak one in the night. I, I leak nonsense. I, I was just getting black. Nothing was leaking. I'll read again. I'll forget. So one day, in the, one day we're preparing for a particular exam. And in that exam I have F9. Correct F9. I sat in the night. And I read. And I removed my hand. I removed my head. And I forgot immediately. I called my mother immediately. I said, there's something that is wrong. My mother said, when I explained the things, I said, travel home. So I traveled home. He called one of the, one of the clergy that he believes. All of, uh, one of the, the clergy. You see, I was a Muslim then. So the imam of the area, he called, he called the young man and he said, this is the problem. He said, don't worry. He said, there's something we need to do. Do input in him the spirit of boldness. So that when he's bold, it's, it's because he's fearful. So they did some one thing inside one black slate. After they did it, they pour it inside a gun. All this local gun. And they say, I should drink from the gun. So I carried the gun. Truly, I drank from it. I dropped it. I returned back to school. I read the game. I forgot. I started crying. I know there was a problem. I failed that exam woefully. Woefully. I faced some few semesters before I returned. Something led to one thing I gave my life to Christ. After I met the Lord Jesus Christ, I could read myself and pass the exam without giraffe. Without, I did never need any special prayer. There was just something that shifted. I'm on the altar of the Most High God. This is a personal story. That your poor is not because of the background where you came out from. You decide to be in alignment with that background. And that's how you are like that. If I did not break free through that system, there won't be any testimony that anybody ever rise from that family and never finish university. I would, have, I would have been buried like some of them. I'm not mocking them. Glory to God. Some of them are successful today, but believe me. Believe me. When it was time to get married, I saw the reality of marriage in the family I came out from. I'm privileged to come from a real family. Money wasn't the problem. No. Money wasn't. But the truth is, there were some few things I know it was not right. And I stood, my, I stood my ground against it. My wife has been with me for a little while. He knows what I'm talking about. A few of my brothers who tends to even have some good money. There's one girl somewhere. There's one, they have one child somewhere. And all man of no... They don't have sexual purity. Neither do they have a straight line family to which they can be proud of. My father had a girlfriend too. And I know that this become a trace from the foundation where they came out from. Let me say this. Understand where you came out from. 
in case success is something that is difficult, don't neglect fighting it. Stand your ground. Don't say my uncle tried. No, stand. It must not continue this way. That was what Jabez saw. He said, no, it won't continue this way. There is a God in Israel. He said that thou were large. He said that thou would have blessed me indeed. He didn't say bless me. He said bless me in. That means good success. I don't just want to be a commoner in blessing. The blessing that people to which. The blessing to which people can be saying this is blessing. No. But the blessing that is indeed that people will know. This is the hand of God. This is good success. Not ordinary success. That means he wasn't experiencing anything good before. He said, no, enough is enough. That thou wouldest bless me indeed. That your hand will rest upon me and keep me from all evil. And I might not cause pain. And the Bible said, the Lord granted him his request. Something shifted. And his destiny became a reality. Foundational force from where you came out from needs to give way around your life if you must see a level of success. Don't ignore you know, the problem with some of us is that because you are earning some few salary, you are proud. He said, no. He said, Pastor, there's no need for this now. And my salary is still 50000 they have not stopped it. They, if they sack you, what's your hope? When there's nothing that is magnetizing faithfully in your life, there's a trouble. Can I say that again? When there's nothing that is magnetizing favor to your life, there's trouble. Yeah, we need to stand tall. To stop foundational trouble that has vow will not succeed. You see, if I teach you a lot the principles and we not deal with these foundational issues and we do not deal with this warfare dimension to succeed, you see, I've not helped you. You will be quoting those principles. You will listen to those messages. You will feel good about it. You will try to engage those principles and yet nothing will work. Why? It is the spirit that sponsors every result that you see in the physical. So if the spirit is not in alignment to give you that reality, you won't see it. Not by power, not by might, but my, by my spirit. Say what? Good success, essentially, is spiritual. And that's why you need to take spiritual warfare in this dimension serious. So, foundational power is key. We saw that in the life of who? In the life of Jabez. Number two is pattern of wickedness. Pattern what? There are people who actually contact us on few things and they bring a pattern into, the, into our family. The mother gave birth when he was in secondary school. When the young girl was actually 17 to exactly when the mother gave birth, she too, she took him. Not that she was married. So that means there's a, there, there is a trait of pattern of wickedness that is manifesting a marital failure in that house. Yeah. There are some houses that we are 40 year old grown up people and yet none is married. There is a pattern that needs to be addressed. There are families I know that when they get a good job, they only enjoy that job for a while. They sack them at the end and they become mediocre for the rest of their life. When you sense a pattern of failure in your family, disconnect from it. One pattern I sense from my family is that they have girlfriends everywhere. Despite the wife they have at home and all of that. I said, no. No, this won't happen to me. There are a few things I didn't tell my wife. We engage in warfare. Before we got married, I told you before, and I'm proud to say, we fasted six months. It's not because I was a pastor. I was fasting for my destiny. There are many pastors who have bad marriage. I did that for my destiny. And the Lord began to show me some few things and few realities to deal with and I dealt with those things. And the pattern to which it's obtainable began to stop. There might be a pattern in the family where you came out from. Your brother tried to apply for university. They bounced him. Failed Wayek. Failed Neko. Failed Jam. And then you, you try too. You have the same failure. The third one tried. Had the same failure. The fourth one should have sense. I said, this is not ordinary. The Lord reminded me a story of a young man. I think he will be listening to this message later. If he's not online now. That young man wanted to marry from a particular family. I've told this story before. And this particular family, anytime they want to give birth, they will give birth and they will die. 
The first one died in that regard. The second one died. In that. The third one was the one this one married. When he brought the girl to me, he said he wanted to marry. I never knew this one. I said, you'll not marry this girl. He said, oh God, I made up my mind. This is where I will marry. I said, okay. And you know something? I've learned something from time. If I said, don't do something, he said, that's what you want to do. I will leave you. I said, don't do it. He said, no, that's what I want to do. He said, don't look as if your pastor is, is the hindrance to your success. So I left the young man. Truthfully speaking, when the wife conceived, I visited them. The wife was heavily pregnant. I visited them. When I visited them, when I saw I saw that there was a trouble. So I knelt down, I prayed, and I prayed on water. I said, you can be drinking this water. But deep inside me, you see, there's a, there's a how you pray for people, and then you feel that God answer. I'm talking to you as a pastor now. Maybe some of you, there's a how you pray about one issue. Look as if you have prayed through over that issue. Has that never happened to you before? You might not see anything as answer, but you know there's this, there's this peace that comes within you that you have prayed well. Am I sensible here? I didn't feel it. God didn't speak to me. So I know there was something. So in the middle of the night, a, there was a member of this church at that time we used to do night vigil together every Friday. That mama we used to do night vigil together. She was, she was in her 60s then. So we are in our house, we are praying in the middle of the night. So the young man called me and said they are in the hospital. They said this will happen, that will happen. They told me, oh man. So the woman, and when the young man visited me, the young man met the woman. So the woman was actually there, they met and all of that. So why he called me in the middle of the night, I told him, he said, is this young man that called? He said, will I pray? So the, we stopped our prayer and the woman was very passionate to pray. Elderly woman. She began to pray. He said, we prayed, we prayed. So they called me and they said, she has delivered their brought out baby. But they are praying that the, you look as if the breeding of the girl is seizing. So when, when they told us that the baby has come out, we, we are grateful to God. The woman was happy. He now called again and said, we should pray. The way the wife is doing, he did not understand. I should pray. I did not pray. The woman was very angry. And the woman, I was I'm a pastor. I was a pastor then. The woman was very angry. She has to slap me by the back. He said, pastor, would you pray? I said, I'm not praying. I'm not praying. I'm sensing some things here. I'm not praying. A few minutes, they called me the woman and the girl died. Because of some few things, they had to bury the lady immediately. Now listen to this. Do not, do not actually climb on any pattern you have not dealt with. Don't do it. No, don't do it. And I told the young man, it was later when the girl died. The young man came to visit me in Abuja and stayed with me for about a week or two. The young man told me, he said, the firstborn died the same way. The secondborn died the same way. He said, the one too. That the wife she actually married actually happened to be the third one. Now listen to this. I just use this as an example. There might be a pattern of failure you have observed in your family. See, don't do strong head. This is the problem with Christians. Don't do strong head and ignore it. No, stand your ground and tackle it. Kabakausa. Don't tackle it. Because if you will not destroy those things, they will be waiting for you in the front. There are devils that wait for people at every junction. They won't come up until you are married. That's the junction. They won't come up until you buy the first car. That's the junction. They won't come up until you have the first child. That's the junction. They won't come up until you begin to prosper. There are devils who are already waiting for you the day you manifest your name. Come on global newspaper. Success with you say now time to strike, and that's why when you notice a pattern in the lineage where you came out from, stay with it. Your father was a vulcanizer, he did it to the point that he could not even raise anything from it. Now you look as if vulcanizer is inviting you, deal with it before you go and start. Am I sensible here? Number three, are we blessed? Are we blessed tonight? Number three. There are realities in the spirit that we need to pray and it takes warfare to deliver. The grace, the wisdom, and the spirit of God takes contention to press into it. The Bible says press earnestly. You said contend earnestly for the best gift. So the gifting of God demands a contention. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse, and verse 11. He said contend earnestly for the what? For the best gift. Best gifts are coveted. And there is a contention before you have it. 
you need grace you need wisdom and the anointing of the spirit of god to succeed but the anointing the wisdom and the grace of god that brings about good success won't just get delivered to you at the platter of good no you contend for it and the best way to contend for it is in prayers grace is released in prayers how many of you agree with me? Great grace is released in prayers. After the apostle chapter 4 and verse 33. Great grace is released in prayers. So if great grace is actually released in prayers, in the place of warfare, believe me, great anointing comes. Because the devil knows when you are fully anointed to succeed, you will devastate his camp. He won't allow you to get it. That's why, that's why he introduced little fornication. He said, don't worry, enjoy yourself, take three bottles. We say, don't worry, people still succeed like that. Even your family, that's how they do. Now, you will bring up a system for you not to be able to contend with grace, with wisdom, and the anointing you need to succeed. And if you lack the grace, you lack the wisdom, and you lack the anointing to succeed, no matter how you try, you are a failure per capita. So, three things you are going to pray for tonight. Number one, Every foundational force of wickedness that has value, you will not be successful. In every department of your life, name every department of your life, including your marriage, including your finances. Pray against them. This is what the Lord sent me to do tonight. Number two, every pattern that you can, every pattern of wickedness obtainable around my bloodline, the Lord put an end to him. And I contend for the grace. I contend for wisdom and the anointing needed. For what? For good success. Is that a good prayer to pray? Is that a very good prayer to pray? So we're going to take it one by one and I'm going to be very brief about it. But before I go for that tonight, 